welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so we'll get going and then Don will be talking after the first piece. I'm Kim Paul, I'm Don's niece, and my mom is back here. And hi up there. <laughs> Thank you. 
at risk of giving away too many secrets, I think you may appreciate the Warlock piece a little more if I give you some clues as to what the composer is doing. I think he had a rather sly sense of humor. At the beginning, you'll hear some chords that sound just about right for Renaissance dance. And nothing too adventurous. But then you get to about bar 12, and you might recoil a little bit and say, did Don make another, another mistake? And maybe not this time, because what the composer has done is to take this A major chord and add a ninth to it, as it's called, which isn't really a Renaissance kind of music sound. It's more modern. So consider that a, a drop of lemon juice added for just a little extra flavor to the dances that are going on. But as we go on through the rest of the suite, little by little, gradually, more and more he's going to add a dash of black pepper here, maybe a little chili pepper there, rosemary, thyme, cardamom, cloves, and it gets more and more adventurous. And eventually, with not just the herbs and spices, he's making unorthodox combinations of the main ingredients. So that by the time we get to number five, we find that we're luxuriating in chromatic harmonic progressions that are more typical of cool jazz. Quite a long ways from where we started out. And then number six, finale, in the very last bit, it's sort of like a flambe dessert in which the cook has poured on about three times too much brandy and when you light the match it goes whoosh. <laughs> and I can sort of hear the composer in the background chuckling over this and saying, gotcha. <laughs>
to borrow a line from the Wizard of Oz, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> So um, we'll go from a piece that was originally for a string orchestra and that was a piano arrangement of it to a piece that is a, it's a piano piece that has been arranged for violin and piano. <laughs> so uh, we, we use arranging a lot to broaden our repertoire, give us more to play so that a pianist can have fun with Capriol Suite and I get to have fun with something that well, all pianists would say is theirs, right? Um, so, uh, Prokofiev, this is originally a piano. But I, I love what happens when you put these instruments together. Thank you. 
on to Mozart, familiar to everyone. What I think is wonderful about this, this set of music is that he titled these sonatas for piano and violin. To give you a clue to how important the piano part is in this. This is not a violin sonata with a pianist just sort of making it more interesting or to kind of keep the violinist in tempo or something. Um, this is, it's almost like a piano sonata with a violin accompaniment, but it's a little bit more equal than that. Um, but it starts with, um, with a kind of a big beginning, but always pay attention to what the piano is doing because it's not all about the violin, thank goodness. Um, I think this is truly a, a performance of equals. Yeah, in, in this case, and he titled it so that you would, you would understand that that's what he was he was into. Thank you. 